Let's continue to talk about membranes. And this is a small pathology here, sort of sidestep to, into a pathology that I wanted to share with you. It has to do with diseases of membranes. I always talk about how important the membrane is. What would happen if you had some transporters of that membrane that didn't work, some channels that didn't work? So let's think of that. Midwives 100 years ago licked the newborns on the forehead. I know that sounds pretty crazy. What were they trying to do? Well, if they found it to be salty, the child they knew was destined to die. Now we don't go around licking the newborns on the forehead anymore, but it's a very interesting story. They knew that that child would have cystic fibrosis. So something to do with that salt content had to do with cystic fibrosis. So where does that salt balancing come from? It's ion, ion transporters on the membrane. So we've been talking about being able to reach that equilibrium or disequilibrium of each solute. What if we have the failure to transport one of those solutes. What if one of those carriers is malfunctioning? What is the result? So in this case, when we talk about cystic fibrosis, we're talking about one specific ion, and that ion is chloride ion. So you have to think of chlorine. And there's one type of channel protein that's defective, that's unable to transport that chlorine outside of the cell and into often a lumen. So the lumen is the inner portion of some sort of tube. So if you're thinking of your trachea, the lumen is sort of the inside where the air is moving. In cystic fibrosis, these channels are in the airways, they're in the sweat glands, and they're in the pancreas. So this is going to affect breathing, it's going to affect digestion and sweat glands going to affect water balance it's called the cftr channel stands for cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator yeah it's a regulator it's a picture of it here there's my cftr channel and what does it do well it takes these little balls here, which is chlorine, and it uses ATP to actually transport that chlorine out of the cell. And let's say it's transporting it in the trachea, the cells that line your trachea, out from that cell into the lumen, that air portion of the trachea. By moving those chloride ions out of the cell and into the lumen, it's going to have a high concentration of those little balls, of those chlorine solutes there. And the result of that is that water is going to go to the higher solute concentration. So water can cross this membrane quite easily. It doesn't need the channel. Water will cross over and come over and allow for the correct moisture inside your trachea. Well, think about if you didn't have that moisture. Think about what would happen if that became completely dry. You would still manufacture mucus. You would still put mucus in there, but that mucus would be dry. And it would be sticky. And it would be a sticky mess without that water that needed to be there that is only attracted to that region if the chlorine were there. So... In the inability to transport that, we create a dry, sticky mess that doesn't allow that individual to, to breathe easily. And so they cough, and they cough, and they try and get this chunky mucus that's gotten way too dry in the trachea out, and they cough and cough, get stuck in the smaller regions of the respiratory system, and it's a big problem for the patient. What if this were to happen in the pancreas? 
so you can't eliminate that fluid that's going to dilute some of those enzymes so instead what you have is digestive enzymes that are not functioning because they're not moving around and they're stuck without the presence of that water. This is a picture of an individual with a, a vest on that's going to do some of the pounding onto their chest, onto the lung region to try and loosen some of that stuck mucus. It's also being able to um, breathe, I guess it's albuterol that's going to try and dilate the airway so that he can breathe better. So enumerated for you, mucus becomes thick in the airways, this coughing. Mucus thick in the pancreas, it blocks some of the ducts and the digestive enzymes, and those enzymes end up possibly not reaching the intestine. So digestion is impaired. Just another picture of a little girl who also has difficulty breathing. Remember, they lack the functional CFTR protein. And if they lack that protein, the chlorine will not move. And if the chlorine doesn't move, water doesn't move. And if water doesn't move, mucus is thick. We're going to stop this mini lecture there. And there's still a couple more relating to membranes. It's a long chapter. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.